Hey guys, how you doing today? So today we have a, a new tool to review. This is a portable carbon monoxide detector. This is the CT580 by Top Test. And they sent this to me for review. And uh, we're going to take it out of the box here and we're going to take a look at it. If you have, if you work in a, like a garage or a shop or anything like that, it's nice to have a, a carbon monoxide tester. If you've got a heater, a furnace, if you run engines or cars or any kind of, uh, anything that's got a flame to it or a fuel, it's a good idea to have a carbon monoxide detector. Uh, this does come with a nice manual. Uh, it's in multiple language, languages, so the very first section here is page 3 to, I uh, forget what it was, 3 to 23 is the English uh, section, so it's not like you got a big thick manual that you've got to learn. Just 23 pages goes over the main features. It does come with a uh, nice case. Comes with a USB cord for charging it up. And this is the unit right here. You got your sensor. You got a little LED light on the front. Here's your buzzer. Uh, it's got a built-in vibrator, so it'll vibrate if you got it in your pocket. Right here on the end, you've got your USB charge port. And I'm going to kind of put that. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see that okay. To turn this unit on, if you hit the power button just real quick, it doesn't, it doesn't come on. You've got to push and hold. Then you're greeted with a nice welcome screen, and then it goes through a series of tests while it's booting up. Sensor's warming up. You got a little scale there. The detector is now on and operating. You can tell you got a green light that uh, momentarily flashes, telling you that everything's good. Zero parts per million of carbon monoxide. Um, so let me get you as close in here as I can so you can kind of see see the screen. So you got your date and time up top here. You got three icons. You've got a vibrating icon, a uh, alarm or buzzer icon by the bell, and then a battery icon. Tells you the charge of the battery. And then here you've got your zero, which is green. That's zero parts per million. At 50 parts per million, it's yellow. At 200 parts per million, it turns uh, red, and then all the way up to a thousand. And it's saying ready because it is ready. Now, if I hit the uh, one of the arrow keys here, it'll go to a graph style uh, screen to where you'll be able to, you know, have a, a graph showing you any kind of fluctuations in the uh, carbon monoxide. And if you hit the arrow again, it just goes right back to the uh, same. Uh, circular style screen. If you hit the uh, little light, you got your light. If you're reaching into a dark, you know, area uh, trying to get a reading, uh, a light could definitely be handy to have. Uh, now, the one nice feature about this is, you know, if you're needing to make sure that this stays on, if you accidentally hit the power button, it won't go off. To get it to turn off, you've got to push and hold, just like getting it to turn on. And then you've got to scale. I don't want it to go off yet, so I'm going to let go of that. And we're just going to go through the functions real quick, and then we're going to give this a real-world test. So if you hit the function button, you're greeted with a screen. Uh, event records is just what you would think it would be. Uh, we're going to go into that. we got alarm records, failure records, calibration records, and system records records so uh right there low uh co that was one of the records uh that we can take a look at whoop take a look at detail 
and jump to if you push and hold the function button. And it gives you the your record of what it detected uh, during that episode. To go back, you just hit the power button. Failure records. I don't know if there's going to be any failure records. Calibration records. And I'll show you how to, cal how to calibrate it here in a minute. And system records. Alarm settings, you got your low, you got your backlash, you got your high and your backlash. Uh, low and high, I, I'm just going to keep them there. You could tweak those if you felt the need to. The backlash is uh, a value you can set to where once it, so once the CO level comes up to, well, in this case, we'll say 50 parts per million, and then it drops back down to 49, at 50, the alarm will go off. At 49, it'll, it, 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 I say go off. At 50, the alarm will come on. The vibrator will come on. If it drops back down to 49, it, both those will go off. If you don't want those to go off as soon as it goes back below 50, you can set that backlash to a value 5, 10, you know, whatever you want. That way, once it hits 50, the alarm is act, actuating it will have to come back down lower than 50 dep depending on what your backlash is. So if you set the backlash to 5, the uh, part per million of CO would have to drop below 45 before the alarm and the vibrating uh, feature would shut off. Same with the high reading of 200. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a calibration real quick. Uh, the default password for this is 1-1. One, one. And then you push and hold the function button. And then you're into the calibration screen. So to calibrate zero, make sure you're in a fresh air environment like I am. There's no CO uh, in the shop right here. So uh, all I'm going to do is just hit the function button and waiting for the operation to finish. So right now it's sensing the air through the sensor and it just calibrated to the air source that it's in right now. You don't want to be in a polluted high CO environment and do a calibration because it's going to calibrate it to zero but it's actually going to be a uh, high co level you don't want that you want to make sure you're in a nice clean area we'll go back uh, calibration value you can set that to whatever you want uh, the default of 500 is is fine with me system settings of course is uh, you got your date and time i've already set that you've got a display where you've got some settings on it, notifications, language, we know what that is. You got Chinese and English, and factory reset. If you want to do a factory reset, then you could do a factory reset. Uh, advanced menu, when you go into it, it's going to present with a password. The password for this one is 222. Push and hold the function, and then you're in the advanced uh, menu. None, nothing here is changeable. This is a CO gas detector. Decimal unit, or decimal, zero bit, unit, parts per million. I'll just scroll through, let you see what, what this stuff is. And then back up to the top. Backup settings, uh, clear record. So if I changed any settings or tweaked anything on this, you could back those settings up. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to clear out your records, you can clear the records right here. And then information. It's just information about the unit itself. you got gas detector. Uh, the serial number's blank. Uh, I don't know any way to put the serial number in there. Software version, hardware version, uh, the build date. The ID, it's got a battery uh, indicator there, charge, temperature. Uh, Celsius is the only temperature. I, I was not able to change this to Fahrenheit. I wish they had 
uh, let you change that to Fahrenheit because here in the States, uh, Fahrenheit is what we go by. Anyway, let's back out of this and let's give this thing a try. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I've got just a little stick right here for our first test. And then we're going to check this on a uh, uh, car exhaust. And basically what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and get this a little bit lower. And we're just going to catch this on fire and let it do a little bit of smoking. And we're going to see if the uh, meter picks anything up. Got a little fire going. We got, we got some indication here. I don't want to hold it too close to the flame because obviously I don't want to melt the uh, sensor. Now it's out, but we do have a little smoldering going on. I can feel the vibration in my hand. You see the red lights because we're over 200. I'm going to move this out of the way. Now we drop below 200. Now it's yellow. So that actually worked pretty good. So now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to open the garage door. We're going to start the car up. I'm going to stand back behind the uh, uh, exhaust, and we're going to see what it picks up uh, on, on it. So let me get everything set up for that. Okay, so we're at the back of the car here. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. we got the meter. Now I'm just going to hold it kind of away from the exhaust a little bit and we'll see if it picks up yep there she goes I'm probably about two feet away hopefully you're seeing that let's go do the now that it's kind of let the idols come down. I wanted to see the scale. So this looks like it works really well. I like the scale feature. We're back here in the garage, so we're away from the, uh, the car exhaust. Let's go ahead and turn the car off. Um, yeah, I mean this thing seems to be like a. It seems to be a pretty nice little unit. The the one thing I wish it had was a clip on the back. So you could clip this on the side, you know, on your belt. That way, as you're walking around uh, in a garage or in any confined space, you could uh, you could have it right there on your side. Now, something else this thing will do is whenever whenever it's on for a certain period of time, a few minutes, it'll the, the screen will go ahead and uh, go dark, and that's to conserve the battery uh, so that it'll stay on. I think it's got a uh, let me, I don't want to say the wrong number. It's got at least a 14 hour runtime. 
takes three to four hours to fully charge it if it's completely dead and it, it will run for 14 hours uh, and detect carbon monoxide let me see anything else that might be pertinent to you I think we went over pretty much everything anyway always nice to have a carbon monoxide detector just to be on the safe side I put a I did a video a few uh, probably about two years ago now where I replaced all of my smoke detectors in my house with smoke slash carbon monoxide detectors there's a lot of people every year that die from carbon monoxide and uh, a simple detector will let you know if the concentrations are getting above a uh, safe limit and you know if you don't have the smoke slash carbon monoxide detectors the, in the building or room or confined space that you're working uh, you might consider getting a portable unit that way you can uh, check it and see see if you're safe you can see the screens already dimmed down and here in a minute it'll actually go completely dark and that's to conserve the battery anyway this was the top test uh, CT580 portable carbon monoxide detector. You guys take care.